20 years since the beginnings of the saga of the Mangrove Mountain Landfill. The community for most of those 20 years has been arguing that a landfill does not belong in the water catchment of the Central Coast. Today we're joined by Dr Stephen Goodwin, spokesperson for the Mountain Districts Association. Welcome. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. If I wanted to, um, let, let's say the landfill didn't exist and there was still bush next to the Nine Hole Golf, golf Course and I decided that I wanted to start a landfill there. Um, so I put in a DA and I went to the EPA for an environmental or an environment protection licence. Would it be likely that I'd get approval for a landfill on that site right now? No, you wouldn't. There's, um, there's a document, an EPA document called Environmental Guidelines for Solid Waste Landfills and it's clearly stated in there that that is an inappropriate site. And why is that site inappropriate? Well, because it's within uh, 40 metres of a water course. Um, originally it was on a water course, but 40 metres from neighbouring water courses that flow down into Arimba Creek. And we all know that Arimba Creek supplies potable water for the Central Coast drinking water supply. So within the time frame that, that I've just mentioned, which is almost two decades, uh, how much waste has been um, deposited at that site within our water catchment? Well, we know there was a survey done in 2012, and that's right at the beginning of an earlier court case in the Land Environment Court, and they surveyed 800,000 cubic metres. We do know um, that there was, there was more since then. The last waste that was allowed onto that site was May 2014. May so, 2014. So there's somewhere between 800,000 and a million cubic metres. Okay, so how did it get there? If this is, an in, if the EPA's own policies say this is an inappropriate site for this sort of activity, how has the Central Coast ended up with um, something the size of a regional waste facility uh, within its within a critical point of its um, or area of its catchment? Hmm. It's a good question. Um, it's a question we all ask as well. Bearing in mind that you have two regulatory authorities meant to be monitoring what was going on there. You had the original uh, former Gosford City Council which granted the development consent with compliance responsibilities and you had the EPA with compliance responsibilities for monitoring its licence. Um, it is the regulator of the licensed area. Um, both of those bear, share the responsibility for what has happened. It just beggars belief how we ended up where we are. Because the original proposal was for 240 Thousand, thousand cubic metres of clean fill. Total, yeah. And there was, well, there was meant to be 20,000 of imported waste and 220,000 of uh, excavated material locally. I mean, the thing started out as a golf course remodelling and it was mm. quite a minor project. And it sort of explains why the infrastructure wasn't put in, for instance, for a waste facility. So, um, uh, uh, things like lining of cells. Well, like leachate systems, uh, leachate holding ponds, none of that was considered necessary then. Right. Um, because it was meant to be just a remodelling. So there were areas on the golf course, that, golf course that needed a bit of fill taken off and placed. Cut and fill, yep. smooth it over, and you end up with a, a more amenable golf course than was previously there. Uh, yes, OK. Well, we'll come back to how amenable the current golf course is. But um, we then had the Land and Environment Court case between Gosford Council and uh, the landfill operator. The outcome of that was not necessarily um, hopeful, was it, for the community in terms of it agreed to how many more tonnes of waste? Another 1.3 million tonne of waste? Mm. Yeah, look, two things about that. Council took the operator to court with multiple parties for an alleged breach of the development consent. That never got resolved. Count, uh, court never actually um, brought a judgment down on that. It was set aside and the parties went to mediation uh, behind closed doors. And out of that came a judgment for an amount of fill which was greater than actually the operator asked for. So you've got to ask yourself, how did that happen? And yeah, you're right, it was 1.3 uh, million cubic metres in the judgment. The EPA has estimated, has calculated that to be equivalent to 1.3 million tonnes of new waste. That's a lot of waste. Well, it's bigger than 
the pilots there now is colloquially known as Bingo, Bingo Mountain. Mountain. Yeah, and mm. this is bigger than that. So it gives you some idea of what we can expect if it's allowed to reopen. Okay, now the MDA, there was also a land transaction between the RSL and the um, landfill operator, um, which resulted in the landfill operator ending up owning the whole site and all the land around the Memorial Club, is that correct? The Memorial Club land, they're on, I think it's five acres, that's their title. Um, but the 40 hectare title, which is the golf course and the land and includes the landfill site, that's mm -hmm. one title. It was formerly owned by the Mangrove Mountain sub-branch of the RSL. They were really disenfranchised and I mm. wasn't around, involved back then, but hearing the story from Danny Wilmot, I mean, it's just tragic. It's an absolute travesty what was done to them, perpetrated on them, and that's something that needs to be addressed as well. Yep. So the MDA has done a lot of research, a lot of work, a, a solid three-year campaign to um, try and get the EPA and our new Central Coast Council to um, own up and clean up their um, statutory failings, shall we call them. It's back in the Land and Environment Court. Uh, the landfill operator has taken the EPA to the Land and Environment Court. Just, just give us an overview, overview of where that's up to. Well, they have sought, um, the, an application was made to the EPA for uh, the licence to be varied. And the var varied is just a, a word meaning renewed. Mm -hmm. So initially when you apply for a licence, it's issued, and then any changes thereafter are variations. So, there's been 13 variations over the years, by the way, um, and that's a story in itself. But currently, uh, they are stuck with the version of the licence um, which existed and still exists at the time that the court case was embarked on, dated 3rd of May 2012. Because part of the orders from that court case were for EPA to go through and, and basically do a new environmental plan, a new water ma management plan, a new waste management well, was, plan. There were two documents in the court orders which re have required further amendment. One was the landfill environment management plan and the other was the leachate management plan. Um, and they were dated 2013 at that time in the court orders. Mm -hmm. And they have required amendment and that has been a process since the orders were issued in 2014, August 2014, to the present date. So. Um, so far, the licence hasn't been varied. Now, it's complicated, let me say it. The operator actually first applied to have the licence varied in 2015, and the EPA never responded to that. Um, so, it got to a point this year where it was taken as a deemed, deemed refusal. refusal. Yeah. Yeah. And so they went to court and sought an appeal against the deemed refusal. Subsequently, they put in a second application, identical to the first, and that was considered by the EPA and they refused it. And so now we're in court, they're in court uh, appealing that refusal. Okay, and by a whisker from what you've told me, um, the Central Coast Council has been allowed to join that action on the same side of the EPA um, to get uh, uh, to stop that licence variation, correct? Yeah, that's right, it is correct. Yeah, look, the EPA actually initially invited council and council considered that matter for a little while and then decided that they would. Um, it was a battle because Verdaterra, the operator, uh, they opposed uh, council joining. They opposed them vigorously. I was there listening to it mm. and it was quite heated. Um, however, the justice sat there and absorbed it all and made a decision that council could join and the community actually is very pleased about that. The um, Land and Environment Court though also allowed Verdaterra to, to go ahead with um, advertising the um, proposed amended licence and, and that um, public exhibition is, is coming up soon, isn't it? Um, what does MDA want to see come out of that? I guess you'd first of all ask, what are they hoping to achieve? And we've asked the EPA and we've asked Council and no one can really work out what the benefit to the bird of terror is. We have our own opinion. We think that by putting this out to public consultation, and it's it's not a development consent, it's nothing substantive, it's just their application to have the licence varied. But by putting it out for public consultation, I think they are hoping that the task is difficult, the community will be deterred or not set time aside to make a submission, and at the end of the day they'll go back to court and say, but Your Honour, um, we were told 
the community was upset about this and yet we've only had four submissions. How can that be, Your Honour? So then please allow me um, to, to ask you a question as, as um, a, a Central Coast mum and householder, someone who uses tap water to cook and bathe and drink, why should I be worried? about this licence renewal and, and what's currently up there? What, what's the concern? What should, uh, why do I need to pay attention to this advertised licence proposal and actually make a submission about it? This is one of those moments in time when the community needs to step up, to, to use the cliche. Let me just describe what's up there in two parts. There is the proposed expansion and there is a lot of design detail, on, and we'll concede that they have probably got the design detail. It's not the issue. The issue is what's there at the moment. That existing waste mound, between 800,000 and a million cubic metres, doesn't have an effective lining, under 85% of it. That means any leachate generated within that mound goes down. Just quickly tell me what leachate is. Well, leachate's the, the liquid byproduct of, of the decomposing process within a a solid waste mound. Oh, my 14-year-old would say, ew. It is. Well, there are, <laughs> there are pictures. The Office of Water's got a picture and it is black and it stinks. Now, the leachate pond there at the moment, um, you can stand alongside of it and it stinks. Um, it is offensive and it's toxic. So you ask the question, why should you be concerned? So when this stuff continues to go through into the underlying substrate, that's the sandstone, yep. there, is, there are aquifers there and aquifers carry water. Now there is a scientific study, and and this this will stand up to anyone's scrutiny, that has shown that 45% of the stream flow in Arimba Creek comes from that groundwater aquifer. 45%. 45% of it. And Arimba Creek flows into. Well, council pumps out of Arimba Creek at the weir, and they pump into Marty Dam, and then they pump water from Marty Dam into Mango Creek Dam. So okay. They are the two water storages for the entire Central Coast. So the issue for you is is not about this this um, unsightly landfill being close to home. It's about the security, the safety, the integrity of water. our water supply. It's about water. For okay. Us, look, the catch cry for us is, and it's a very simple one, and I think it's occurred to you, is water, not waste. Simple as that. We had one where water was implicated up in the Wyong Shire of water not coal. This one's just as powerful. It's water not waste. We can't afford to allow that to remain there and we can't afford to have the site reopened and continue this practice. Okay, so you're going to be campaigning quite strenuously to, to get the whole community, the whole, every household reliant on um, the local water supply to make submissions about why this license shouldn't be renewed and why dumping shouldn't return um, to, to Mangrove Mountain. Um, you're not sure, the EPA hasn't confirmed the dates for that exhibition yet, have they? No. The matter's actually, so it's the stay matter's, tuned? The matter's back in court. So the parties, that's um, Verdeterra, Council and EPA, have agreed on the wording of a public notice that's going out. That's then got back in court for them to sign off on that. Mm -hmm. When that's signed off, then papers locally will receive a request to, for advertising space. It'll okay. Be a page. So how are you going to get the message out to people? Have you got an active Facebook page or um, that people can, you know, like and share? Or what's, what's the best way to engage with you so that you can then um, prompt the people on, on how to participate in this campaign? So the, time the water not waste campaign. Yeah, look. So to explain, the time frame is essentially the first ad we know has to be in a paper by before the 8th of November. Okay. And with the number of editions that the court's mandated, it's going to be around about, say, the 22nd of November, uh, given that they will probably allow a month's exhibition. So it's going to be somewhere between late November and late December when people can put in submissions. So we, at the moment, we don't have a Facebook page. I mean, we've hit the ground running. Yeah. This is quite difficult. but. Uh, what we intend to do because I don't want to deter people but it, it is going to be challenging yeah. to see the notice and to see maybe a dozen documents and to try and make sense. Now these documents are going to be in hard copy in the uh, Wyong Chamber and in the Gosford Council Chamber but they'll also be online Right. and there'll be a separate web page on the EPA site 
and there'll be an email address, a dedicated email address okay. for, for response. And, and you're going to put resources out into the community to help yeah. people through that yeah. process. Now, whilst that process is happening, you continue to campaign for a commission of inquiry. Uh, and you, if in today's paper, you're talking about the fact, and the EPA has concurred, that it looks like um, the leachate and sediment ponds have never been in the licensed area. No. So this is another pretty major faux pas about the way the current waste facility has operated over a long time. Just briefly tell us why you are, are so adamant that this needs a commission of inquiry. Well, this evidence is just a further example of a failing. You, the question is, how did it happen? That There's no denying it did happen. The EPA is going back into its files to find out how it happened. <coughs> Excuse me. And the only way the facts of this and the facts of how the landfill got to be when the council was on duty, when the EPA was on duty, is to have a special commission inquiry. It has judicial powers. It has the powers to call anyone and any information. We lift up all the rocks and we find out how it went wrong and, dare I say, who is responsible. So it can't happen again? Absolutely. And the disconcerting thing is that the government declined to announce an inquiry because the matter was in court. Mm. They are two separate issues. The court is dealing with a simple request to vary the licence. That's the here and now. We're talking about historically what went on that caused this metaphorical and literal mess. Okay. Well, folks, there you go. November is no water, not waste month. Um, thank you so much for your time, Stephen, and for your work on this project. And thanks for the opportunity.